Hi there folks, the purpose of today's demonstration is to show you how I've built an agent that can generate Word documents. It can actually look at its knowledge, it can reason over various products that I have, and then it can generate a Word document, attach it to an email, and send it as a quotation. So this is the quotation agent that I've built. Make sure you hang on to the end where I'll show you this demo in full. We've got a quote for 10 small monitors, and then five laptops, five keyboards, and five mice. And if I jump over into my email, I now have a quotation for five laptops, 10 monitors, five keyboards, and then five mice. So it looks like our agent has understood my intent. It's generated that quotation, both via the email, but also via that Word document. Now let's get back into understanding how this agent is built. So to set the scene, I have an Excel document. It's a structured document with various details about the products that I offer. They're all related to IT, so that we can ask about purchasing laptops and desktops and various peripherals and get the SKUs and the unit prices and details about those products, and maybe even specify the particular hardware we're looking for or manufacturer. Now, if I jump across onto the agent again, under knowledge, you can see that I've uploaded that file earlier and it's now ready to receive questions. This is perfect for a structured file. The alternative would be to add knowledge and have a look at Dataverse where we can reason over structured data in a Dataverse table. The advantage of using Dataverse over an Excel file, of course, is that Dataverse can be updated in real time. It's a table, whereas an Excel file is uploaded directly to the agent. If you need to make changes to that file, you're gonna to have to upload a new version. Also, the uploaded file is available to everyone that uses the agent, whereas the data behind Dataverse requires the user to be authenticated and they'll only see the data that they have access to. Now, other than the instructions, which you can see on screen right now, under Actions, I have a Power Automate flow that I've built. The reason I've gone with a Power Automate flow versus a series of actions to both populate a Word document and then send an email is because despite trying, time and time again with those two actions and generative orchestration, I could not get it to populate a Word document. I was very, very close to doing so, but creating a flow is a convenient way of packaging together those two actions in order for me to create that process that the agent can call dynamically. So if I click on that flow, we can see that the description will explain to the agent that it uses it to populate an invoice template and send an email. And then if I go to inputs, I have a series of inputs related to the invoice lines. Now this one is particularly interesting in that it's based on the selected products in the quotation. I'm going to summarize each brand model and capacity into a product description, select the SKU and quantity and unit price, and therefore calculate the line total. I'm going to output a JSON array and you'll see that I've actually supplied a sample of the JSON array data. And this is what makes you able to populate a repeatable table in a quotation document. Now I've previously covered how to populate repeating controls in a Word document, and that in itself is quite a complex process. But the very fact that you can explain this to the agent in natural language by providing an example array like I've done here makes this whole process extremely powerful. As I move down through the other input parameters, you can see for the total, I have a description there. I also have the salesperson, which will either be based on the system variable or signed off as a quotation agent if it can't find that value. My reasoning behind this explanation was I was going to take this agent through to being fully autonomous because I could imagine this monitoring a shared mailbox, receiving incoming emails about quotation requests, and then using that incoming email, you could send that information off to your agent to reason over, look over your products, generate a quotation, and reply back to the end user. If that's something you're interested in, I can maybe build a part two of this video. Let me know in the comments. Otherwise, if you're interested in autonomous agents, I do have a video and I'll include that in the description for you to watch also. The final input parameter is the email response. The key thing to call out here is I've specified that the response should always be in HTML format. I've also asked that we summarize the products, the total cost and the sign off amount. 
So let's see what this agent can do. So if we take a look at the original Excel document that I've uploaded to our agent as knowledge, I think I'm going to ask it for a quote for our Lenovo desktop, which we can see is currently $800. I'll ask for five of them and see if we can get a quote. Back onto the agent, I'll ask, can I get a quote for five Lenovo desktop PCs and also include the largest possible monitor? We'll see our agent reason over the knowledge sources and then it calls my flow dynamically. Not only has it provided me with a summary in the chat, for those five machines, of which that costs 4,000. It's also selected a single monitor at 700 pounds, the grand total being 4,700. Now it's not fully in understood my intent here because I actually wanted a monitor for each of them. So I'll ask, can you update that quotation and include five monitors? We can see that the values have now been updated and if I jump across into my email, I actually have two quotations, the first of which includes the document with a quote for those five Lenovo's and the one monitor, which was 4,700. But if I have a look at the newly sent quotation and pop that open, we can see that we have five of each totaling $7,500. So we'll now have a look and see how I've built out this flow and also a quick look at the Word document. So if I pop open the Word document, it's actually a Word template that's available to download. But what I've done is I've inserted various plain text controls. I've added one for the salesperson. I've added one for the date. And then I've got repeating controls. So I've got the SKU, the quantity, the description, unit price, and line total. And then those five text controls are wrapped in this repeating control, which is called order lines. Finally, I've got a total, another control, which is why if I jump back onto our agent and Copilot Studio and go to edit this flow, remember we went into the inputs and these inputs actually match the data that's required for my Word template. But these input parameters will correspond with my Power Automate Cloud Flow. So over onto my Cloud Flow, you'll see that I have those input parameters defined. I have invoice lines, total, salesperson, and email response. I then use the populate a word template action. I've selected the template that sits currently on my OneDrive. And then in my order lines, I've wrapped the text that comes back from the agent using that sample JSON array that I've asked it to provide in the JSON expression. And that converts the stringify JSON back into readable JSON for our action. Now, if you're wondering where did I get that structure from? It's actually quite simple. If I remove this expression and I'll toggle this back into the default mode, which is array mode, if I hit add new item, you'll see that it starts to build out a structure based on those various controls that I've added to my wired template. Here we have the SKU, then we have the quantity, we have the description, the unit price, which I'll put in as 999, and then the order total, I'll put that in as 200. Now the reason I'm putting values in here is if I now use this T to toggle, you'll see that I have a pre-built structure and it's that structure that we want our agent to create, which is why when I jump back across onto our agent and we have a look at that input parameter for the invoice lines, as I scroll down through that, this is where I got the sample JSON array from. So you build your Word document first, you then generate a sample JSON array, and then you can pass that to your agent so that it understands the structure that it needs to create in order for you to pass that into your populate Word document action. And of course, this applies to any other scenario where you need JSON to be created. Just remember that the agent will send it through as stringified JSON, and you'll have to convert it back into JSON. And then if we jump back across onto our Power Automate flow, where we can remove the sample that's been generated. The expression I'm looking for is, is going to be based on the trigger that includes those invoice lines. If I look to choose dynamic content, you'll see that at the moment it's not allowing me to choose. It's because that input parameter is text and this is expecting an array. So you've got a couple of options. You can add in a compose or because I know that these other properties here are text, 
I can actually temporarily use the FX within that. I can use JSON like so. I can go to dynamic content. I can choose invoice lines and we now have that expression that I need for my order lines. I'm just gonna copy that with a control C, jump back into my order lines, open up FX, paste it back in and hit add. And I now have that original expression based on the dynamic content from the trigger, which is our, our invoice lines that our agent has created. When it comes to the date, I'm not actually using any data from the agent at all. I'm just using UTC now. And this gives you an opportunity to combine data from both the agent, but also potentially from other data sources. The total is of course the dynamic content from the agent. And to be honest, I didn't expect it to get the total correct. So I was considering actually adding up the values within the array that it creates, but it's been reasonably accurate. Large language models are not known for being good at maths, but something to keep an eye on. And then we have the salesperson, again, another dynamic value that's passed through. When it comes to sending an email, I've passed in the email response into the body so that the agent is generating that email based on the request. At the moment, I have a fixed email address. Of course, you can make that dynamic. But then when it comes to the attachment, you'll see that I've created an array here and I'm using this content bytes, which is a dynamic value from the populate a word document. This enables us to pass the base64 into an array, which includes both the file name and the content bytes. And that's why I see the newly generated file attached to my email. If I wanted to save that to SharePoint, I could equally add in a create file action and have it do all that too as part of this flow. Flows are generally quite good if you want a deterministic outcome. I don't want the process to, to vary within the agent. I want it to always populate the template and send an email. So by combining the two actions, this is ideal. And I've also found it to be more reliable for this particular scenario. So that's the solution. If I come back onto the agent, I'll let you see the instructions once more. But if I maybe go and ask it something slightly more complicated, I am looking for a quotation for five high spec laptops, 10 small monitors and Logitech keyboard and mice to be used on the laptops. Can you send me an email quotation. I'm hoping it'll understand my intent. We'll get a quote for 10 small monitors and then five laptops, five keyboards and five mice. And just like that, it looks like our agent has generated the data. It sent it to my flow. I've heard the ping. And if I jump over into my email, I now have a quotation for five laptops, totaling $9,000, 10 monitors at $250 each, five keyboards at $650, and then five mice at $100 each, equaling $500, giving me a grand total of $12,650. If I bring up the original Excel file alongside the email, if we have a look for lap, 003, we can see that's $1,800. We've got five of them. We've got Mon002, which is $250 each, and that's the HP E24 G4. And it's certainly the smallest of the monitors available that I have from my stock list. If we look at key 001, that's $130, so 650 in total. And then finally, if we have a look for that mouse 001, it is indeed $100 and it is the MX Master 3. So it looks like our agent has understood my intent. It's generated that quotation both via the email, but also via that Word document. And we've successfully built a quotation agent that can reason over your structured data, generate some JSON that it sends to the populate Word document action, and then attach that Word document to an email and sends it out to your customer. The other things to consider are, of course, a human in the loop. Will this always get it right? Well, you would hope so. Possibly not. It's the nature of AI. And so what I might suggest is rather than sending the email directly to the end user, 
is look at the ability to generate a draft email. Now it's probably no surprise to hear that I have a video on how to create draft emails and I'll share that in the description also, but it's also worth noting that if I scroll down here, one of my lovely subscribers, Moyura, has pointed out that there is a draft and email message action. Now this was quite a surprise to me because I've always created draft emails using the Graph API. But when I looked into this and had a look at the available actions, if I search for draft, it does not exist in the documentation. But if I jump back across into my flow and we'll add an action and have a look for draft email, you'll see that we have an action for draft an email message. So maybe rather than sending an email, you look at drafting an email message, exactly the same setup. We have the ability to add attachments and we can simply copy across those dynamic values into the draft an email message. And now rather than sending an email directly to the end user, you've got that opportunity to review the email, review the attachment, and then send that email from your draft folder in Outlook. So as always, please make sure you like and subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you again sometime soon. Cheers.